Now, before you watch this video, it's important that you've watched the video about how to find the gradient of a line from two points. Now, it says, finding the value of k given the gradient. So, write down the gradient of a line joining the point k, k plus 1, and 4, 7. So, now remember, the to find the gradient of two points is gradient is the change in y divided by the change in x. So change in y divided by the change in x. Now, it's important to make sure that you are consistent here. So if you're going to do 7 take away k plus 1, it's important that you do 4 take away k or vice versa. So I'm going to do uh, I'm going to do k plus 1 minus 7 and I'm going to do k minus 4. So k plus 1 minus 7 over k minus 4. Now you can just tidy up that top bit because 1 minus 7 is minus 6. So k minus 6 over k minus 4. And that's the uh, general equation for the gradient of these two points. Now, we're told to find the value of k if the gradient of a line is 2. So, that was part A. So, part B says basically, we now know what the gradient is and we want to find out what k is. So, we're told the gradient is equal to 2. So, we're going to set what we just found, this, equal to 2. So, 2 equals k minus 6 over k minus 4. Now, bit of algebra here to find out what k is. Now we want to move this uh, divide by k minus 4 first. So we're going to do the opposite which is to multiply. So 2 times k minus 4 is equal to k minus 6. Now you need to expand this bracket. So 2k minus 8 is equal to k minus 6. Now this is quite an easy little equation to solve. So take away k from both sides, so I'm left with so minus k from both sides. So I'm left with 1k here, minus 8 equals minus 6. And then add 8 to both sides, so k is equal to 14. Right, part C. Part C says, find the value of k if a line is parallel to the x-axis. So let's just think about this question first. So we're told parallel to the x-axis. So let's just think. So that's y equals x um, and that's y equals a half x. Um, the gradient's going, the gradient's getting closer and closer to zero the closer it gets to the x-axis. So anything along this line must have the gradient zero because that's getting closer and closer to zero. And remember, of course, if the line goes over here, like down here, it becomes a negative gradient. So what we're actually saying is we want k minus 6 over k minus 4 equal to 0. That's what we're asked. That's what we're asked. You just check we've done that the right way around. I have. So we're told to set that equal to 0. So, yet again, we're going to multiply through by this k minus 4. Well, 0 times anything becomes 0. So all you're left with is k minus 6 equals 0. So k is equal to 6. Now, we've looked at a situation where it's parallel to the x-axis, and we said that the gradient must be 0. Now, if it's this way, we're actually looking at the case where the gradient is equal to infinity because the more the higher the gradient gets the steeper the line gets and the only time it's ever going to be exactly parallel to that is when the the x value is infinity so an infinite number now that means the only way this can happen I'm just going to do this as an extra part to this question so d so the gradient is parallel to the y axis so parallel to the y axis now, infinity is written a bit like a sine with number 8. Now, the only way this can happen is when the bottom value here is equal to 0. 
Now, if you do this on a calculator, if you've ever tried doing something like 5 divided by 0, you should find it comes up with something like math error, syntax error, something along them lines. Because what that's implying is it hitting a number called infinity that it doesn't know. And the only way that can happen is when the bottom value, so this k minus 4, is equal to 0. So if we were asked to do parallel to the y-axis, it would be k minus 4 equal to 0, so k would be 4.